Hi, everybody. This is Scott McLeod. We're talking with schools all across the country and the world about how they're responding to the coronavirus. Today, I'm lucky enough to have a couple friends from the Bismarck Public Schools in North Dakota with me. We've got Ben Johnson, Assistant Superintendent for the Secondary Schools, and Tana Kincaid, Technology Innovation Director. Um, and we're going to try and keep this to about 10 minutes, which is the goal here. They're very busy. So Ben and Tana, just talk a little bit about how have you all been responding to the coronavirus so far? What have you been up to? So I guess I would allow Tana to maybe lead in with a little bit more details, but I'd first just say that our really the old African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, you know, go slow and go together. And so we are really trying to take last week to really figure out what is a coherent long-term plan of how we would like to approach the work for distance learning as a district. Um, this week has been really about ramping up, which seems honestly like weeks or months ago, last Sunday and Monday when this really rapidly started changing for us locally here, as well as for many other districts across our nation. And so then this week has been, now how are we supporting teachers and building level administrators in rolling out that work and collaborating? How are we working around making sure that students are being fed? And um, some of those basic safety, belonging, social, emotional, um, protective factors that we're trying to develop that, uh, as well as look at individual needs along the way. So it's not only the academic, it's that whole child approach. Anna? Yeah, I would say um, similar in terms of just really taking some time to think about what are the core <clears throat> principles in different pieces of this? What are the things that we kind of, the frames that we run decisions through? So that's been tremendously helpful as you get more and more variables and other decisions that you're making just to be calibrated on what do we really care about? And so I think we did take some time in the beginning to to recognize that we care about relationships, that's um, staff relationships and student to family relationships. So from a technology standpoint, we spent most of the first week that we knew about this really um, promoting and talking about the communication and the connectivity tools that we have to one another in a digital environment and to um, from us to families. And, setting that up and helping people practice with those tools because without that we can't really advance the distance learning pieces. Fair enough. So what seems to be working so far? It's going well. I would say that you know that connectivity has been going well. This week we really focused on now device access and internet access from home because that's important in, dig in distance learning. Um, we had, you know, Bismarck Public Schools has really been supported by the community and our board. So we had one-to-one -one devices for fifth through eighth. Not all of them were take home, but we have been getting those distributed to families mm -hmm. so that they have that access and then working with them if they don't have internet on those sorts of things. So I think um, what's going well is the fact that our district supported a lot of this before this happened. So we had a lot of really good things in place that was just figuring out how to leverage those and systematize those. Great. I'd say that, I think that's also really that there is a lot of collective wisdom, not only across the district, but through everyone's personal learning network. You know, Scott, you're the one that introduced me to Twitter many, many years ago. And so I think I'm trying to stay up by following some of those thoughts leaders and see what's working in their districts or what other thoughts might be around the corner to anticipate. Um, and I think then locally how that plays out is that we're trying to create circumstances with great support from TANA, not only for teachers, but for the students, but really it's about helping all teachers be able to feel comfortable and be vulnerable as learners. And that's the thing that I think we're seeing too, is that just like we're asking you know, students to do this work. Teachers have never at mass quantity had to do this distance learning. They might have had great blended learning, but we're trying to ask people to do things that they took, usually you take months or years kind of preparing and shaping. We're asking in a matter of weeks to fail forward, 
but know that you're supported, we're together. And um, that's kind of, I think the approach that we're taking, we'll try to maintain some sort of continuity, but it can't just be the same expectations for all the work. We're really trying to focus, I think, deliberately about having conversations about what are the prioritized standards. We've done a lot of work with standards-based education in our district, and I think that that's really helped us too. So what's essential? What do we want all rising fifth to sixth graders want to know at least? But also, um, we're trying to balance that with trying to say, okay, this is our short-term online learning. If this becomes longer, you know, Tana and I, uh, Tana is very much a constructivist and she can talk about that, but I think we want to be able to see what other things as the weather gets warmer here, uh, what other things can we have kids do locally, you know, whether it's, you know, planting gardens or getting out and about, you know, within a defined space so that they can have a little bit more interdisciplinary approach in our middle schools, particularly as I'm secondary, I would say, and I think elementary too, are kind of trying to say what experiences can we engage in kids where they can take off multiple standards versus just a pure siloed online. So we're really not saying, we started saying e-learning like electronic learning, right? And we quickly moved to say our framework, I think Tana helped frame that up for me is, you know, distance learning, maybe definitely an online component, but there's these other aspects of what do we want kids to be engaged in. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got about three minutes left. Where do the challenges seem to be right now? So where are the struggles? Um, I think as a community, there's some struggles with some of the connectivity. I feel like we're doing pretty good with that, but it'll just be continuing to work with families. And I would say that's just all about personalization from here out. You know, we've we've got a good infrastructure and kind of that first plan. And mm -hmm. now it's really personalizing to the needs and the situations that families are with. And that's about um, professional creativity and critical thinking and problem solving with those situations. Sure. I'd quickly add that I think another realization that many people, whether you're in education or not, are working from home and then also trying to be your own children's educators. So whether you're a young mother with uh, children that have, you know, food needs or whether you're, uh, you know, a uh, another parent who has teenagers that have different demands it's how do you balance that where you're used to kind of having this conquer and divide approach um kids go to school they learn there and they do most of that work i have limited you know support where it's now i'm having to balance that too so we're recognizing that in our educators as well and that's why we're also not trying we are very much approaching from an asynchronous approach where yes, there might be great opportunities where people could synchronously come online, but most of the work at least has an asynchronous approach um, and thread through it so that students and parents and their lives may dictate that they may not have to share devices or may not have the same schedules that allow to just be on at 11 o'clock and be doing this you know, learning. So that's, I think, helping and giving our teachers grace and understanding too. Um, same with principals on down. Yeah, absolutely. What about things like social emotional learning, food security areas that are sort of, you know, beyond the traditional academic, um, you know, needs? So, you know, we've gotten some greater flexibility from the federal government to be able to give food out at all sites versus uh, just certain ones that qualified initially. And so that has really um, ramped up our ability to uh, provide access and meet kids where they are at um, and their families. And so I think the other day we had about 2,000 meals that we're offering, um, you know, that out. And so I think we we do realize that many students depend. We send like kind of a breakfast home as well. So we're handing out here's lunch and here's breakfast for the next day. And so we're we're approaching that. Our um, business operations, food service you know, kind of all hands on deck, buses, paraeducators, other people are helping to hand that out. Um, that being said, our planning and with our counselors and uh, school psychologists and, um, you know, social workers are very much special education. Other people are looking at, you know, developing components, just like we have academic, you know, math and English standards. We're trying to build what kind of online learning might we approach there. My own daughters, and this is where it's personal for me too, my own daughters are in our system. 
So one of her, my daughter's teachers reached out and said, hey, we're used to having morning meetings where we share things. And so that began, you know, today to post something about that's been happening in your family so that you get that little connectivity with your friends and your peers. Right, cool. Tina, anything else you want to share before we sign off? I would just say student support services and just the connections to families has been big. Like I said, it's the connectivity and the relationships. So calls are going to each of those families, whether it's a teacher, but they're asking those families, mm -hmm. how are things going? And whatever their response and need is, there's a fleet of people um, that can be connected to them to help with that. Um, and then our learning distance learning plan also includes um, some of those SEL learning components that our students were already engaged in. So really trying to leverage those distance as well. I would say too that we have some school-based mental health. So that's part of the plan is we've allowed students with outside providers to go seek those appointments in their therapeutic offices where they're normally in school. But as we move forward, that's part of our plan too is to you know, try to provide some van transportation so that students' services aren't disrupted because we know that we have to address sometimes those mental health uh, supports and wellness, especially in this time where they, there can be further feelings of isolation. And so we're, our providers have been wonderful partners and uh, again, can't ask for a greater response by a community. I think most communities can say that they're very impressed when people come together. Got it. Ben and Tana, thanks so much. I know how busy you are. Sounds like Bismarck's doing a great job in these early days and uh, good luck with everything. This has been fantastic. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.